Hi, uh, this is going to be part three of the uh, Cubase crash course. So um, part three is all about uh, plugins. So let's start um, saving plugin settings. So let's say I have this acoustic guitar here and I'm going to insert some compression on it. Um, okay, so I like these settings. If I want to save this preset here, I go up here on this little arrow and I say save preset. I'll save it on top of test delete later. It's, uh, you can give it the, a unique name. This is just some, a garbage thingy I have here. And uh, yeah, you can see here, this is the name of the preset that's loaded. So if I remove the plugin, just click and drag to remove the plugin. If I go compressor, if I click on this empty space here, this opens the, pl the plugin uh, preset browser. And here I have my preset, test delete later. And these are my settings. So one more thing that's really useful in this menu is save as default preset. If I hit that, that will save the current setting as the default preset when I open the plugin in any other circumstances in other projects and stuff. So if you're always using the same setting for your plugin, um, just say save as default. It will keep that default there, and then you can tweak it from there. So you can save a lot of time using that function. Um, okay, so I'll, re I'll remove this plugin here. Uh, I'll go back and insert now one more. Let's say a de -esser. So we got a compressor, a de -esser. So these two here are uh, multiple plugins. I could have more than two, but I'll, let me copy-paste this to have a bit more. So we have four here. So to copy a plugin, Alt, click Alt and drag. Um, so right here on this little logo here, preset management, you can save effect chain preset. So I can save a chain that contains all of these plugins that I can load later on. Uh, this can be pretty useful. Um, this is only going to save the insert, the inserts chain. If you want to save, um, let's say, uh, your pan volume, uh, your sends, your pre-filtering, EQing that's happening in here, channel strip, you, or even the, the uh, VST instrument you're using, you want to use track presets. So you want to right-click on the track you're using and say save track preset. So you can save them here, and this is going to save everything that's on your track except routing. Um, then when you want to load the track preset, you can load it on an existing track by right-clicking and going load track preset, or you can load from, uh, you click an empty space here and go using track preset. So bring up the menu. Let's say I want my VO chain, and now it's loading my VO chain, and my inserts are here, and do I have EQ here? No, no pre-filter. So it just loads up the whole thing for you. You just have to redo your routing here for your ins and your outs. The outs are usually okay, mostly for the input, and uh, you're good to go. And these work for uh, VST instruments, so it's really useful. Okay, so now that we've uh, we got save uh, plugin settings, saving plugin chains, saving track presets, um, yeah. Let's just go on and I'll go over like all of my favorite uh, Steinberg uh, plugins. Uh, I'm not going to do them all, all, but I'll let me do a few here. So I'll remove uh, these plugins here. Um, and uh, we have an acoustic guitar here. Basic stuff. Uh, let me show you. Um, so on the master channel, on my stereo out, I load Supervision. This is a really cool uh, new plugin that uh, Steinberg developed. It's, um, it's a metering uh, plugin. So basic, you, basically, you decide whatever you want to see here. I customized it, so this is my default view. So I have the waveform view, I have here um, peak metering and RMS, and I have um, RTA here, real-time analyzer. 
Um, you can customize this software like you want. If you want to see more stuff, you just press here to split horizontally, here to press ver split vertically. Here you go if you want to uh, select the different um, analyzers that they have. Level, they got uh, loudness if you're doing post. Um, spectrum curve, that's uh, a bit like my RTA here. Um, phase scope, so there is really tons of stuff, the time. I really find that the waveform is really interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the one I use, uh, mainly combined with the uh, the metering. And um, yeah, so this is a nice new plugin that Steinberg developed, um, Supervision. So it's under uh, Steinberg plugins and it's under Analyzer. Uh, next up, we have all the uh, delay plugins. Uh, let me show you. Um, those are all plugins that I use often. Um, let me show you on the vocal track here. This is a terrible vocal track, but it will do the job for um, the purpose of this video. So let's go Steinberg delay. I'll start with the uh, mono delay, which is the most simple one. So this one is just a mono delay. Um, it's panned center. Um, you have a low high filter. Uh, you, so it cuts the lows, cuts the highs. Um, here is the delay. You can sync it to the tempo or you can have it free. Um, one classic setting is 120 milliseconds, no feedback. So this is like a slap. Oh, oh. Take it out. Oh. Whoa. Put it back in. Whoa. Um, yeah, so this is a slap. You can do basically very basic delays with this thing, uh, and it's always clean also. So these plugins do not have any um, like saturation simulation or anything, so you can hit them as hard or as you want, and they'll always sound very clean. Whoa. Whoa. So now I'm on a whole note delay. Um, yeah, and feedback is the amount of repetitions you're going to get. Then mix, uh, well, it's the mix. You want to hear the dry signal or the delayed signal, and you can mix. So yeah, the mono delay is very similar to the uh, stereo delay. Stereo delay is the same thing, but you have, um, you have the ability to pan. So you can do a left-right with a different... Uh, uh, different delays. There is tons of uh, cool um, presets too. They're very basic delays, but actually they work really good and they're um, very efficient on the CPU. Ping pong delay is a delay that you can decide if it starts on the left or on the right. So. Whoa. 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 So you see it's going Whoa. left, right, left, right. It's really Whoa. slow right now. And same thing, you can low high filter, feedback, and mix. They have very similar interface, so um, they're pretty easy to use. Um, if I go in delay again, um, next one, uh, let's go mod machine. Mod machine I don't uh, use really often, but it's oh, it's right here. Um, it has tons of cool um, presets. Let's try one, Madonna. Whoa. So you have modulated parameters. So um, it's modulating the filters. Um, it's modulating. Uh, so here you can see the uh, what's getting modulated here is the filter. Um, it's a more complex um, delay. I actually do not uh, use it that often, but uh, some presets are cool sometimes when you're looking for some interesting delay troves. Um, so that's what mostly I use it for. You got multi-tap also, uh, which uh, is a new one. And um, this one has tons and tons and tons of options and tons of presets. And it's very more spacey. Because every uh, delay repetition can be uh, used. You can use effects, different effects on every delay repetition. So on uh, repetition one here, there's reverb, um, and delay on tap one and tap two. Um, it's a very, very complex uh, 
delay um, VST. I actually use very simple effects usually, so I'm I'm not using this one as much as just the stereo or mono, but um, it's very useful. Um, and it sounds great. So next up, in now we did the uh, delay plugins. Uh, let's go in the uh, the distortion here. In the distortion, the bit crusher is a fun one. So this one is kind of like the uh, classic bit crusher effect you get uh, if you're running your sounds through old samplers or um, yeah, Daft Punk use uh, bit crushers tons of times. Um, let me apply this on the uh, guitar. We'll hear it a bit better. So I'll type in bit crusher. Yeah, when you're loading your plugins, just click here and type in what you want. Bit crusher. Here you go. There's a few modes on the bit crusher. Um, some are brighter, some are darker. And it's you got the, your mix and um, bit depth. So let's keep that at 12 for now. Four and two are darker, one and three are brighter. I find that one and three and two and four are pretty similar to each other. So I usually use uh, four or one. Let's see. And yeah, this is the amount of bit crushing. You can automate it, do crazy stuff. Um, it's kind of fun if you have like synth sounds that that are too bright or that don't fit in the mix. And uh, you can just use that and uh, use a sample divider and pump it up and it it can create, uh, it can sit some sounds in the mix uh, pretty nice. Um, let's go in now with the uh, Grungalizer. So this one is a fun one uh, for uh, lo-fi stuff. It's basically a plugin to add noise, crackle, uh, distortion, some weird uh, EQ filtering. So. Yeah, this is more like a lo-fi uh, thingy. I usually combine it with the uh, other plugins that I'll show you later on to get the uh, lo-fi sounds. Um, Quadrafuzz is a very, very extensive uh, multi-band distortion plugin. Really fun. Uh, if you want only a bit of uh, additional top end, just load it up and click on here, this drive here. So these are the four bands, low, Low mids, mids, and highs. So now I'm pumping up the drive. You see that the pick is really getting super bright. Um, yeah, you can choose different types of uh, distortion for each band. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. There's some good uh, starter up uh, uh, presets here. There's also the width on each band, so you can decide if you want more width on each band if you're treating a, a stereo sound, so it will actually boost the um, the uh, side signal. And um, yeah, this is a very uh, cool plugin also. Um, the soft clipper is terrible, do not use it. It's not like most other soft clippers. Um, if anyone knows how to use this correctly, please let me know, but I find it's terrible. Um, the VST amp rack, if you're playing guitar, uh, yeah, if you're playing guitar, sorry, I was long to open. Uh, you got tons of settings to, to start. Let's say if I load something up for my acoustic guitar, it's gonna sound. Sometimes it's cool also to blend these on, uh, blend these sounds with the uh, original mic sound. Acoustic guitar through a guitar amp uh, has been done many times, so you can have fun with that. And VST bass amp, well, it's basically the same thing, but for your bass amp, so you got them. Um, it's a virtual uh, amp simulator for your bass. Uh, next up, we'll go into the dynamic section. Uh, in the dynamic section, uh, plugin that I use a lot is just a basic compressor. It's really good. It's uh, very clean. 
Um, you got your threshold here. Um, by default, it opens up on auto makeup gain. So the more you compress, the more it will uh, pump up the makeup gain. If I do not use this, this sounds really low because it's um, I have to add manually makeup gain. So the auto makeup gain is cool. It's not perfect, but it's cool. Um, it can also um, you have your ratio setting, which is what you have on every single compressor. Um, well, on almost on most compressors, attack, hold, release. So I won't go on every uh, single on how to uh, use a compressor. Um, but this one here is a fun thing, analysis. So this, uh, if you go on peak, uh, the compressor will react faster, will react to peaks. And if you are on RMS, react more to the RMS volume. So um, historically, some compressors are RMS, some are peaks, some are in between. So this kind of gives you um, a way of changing the behavior of the, compress uh, the compressor uh, without affecting any other um, parameter. You got auto release too. Um, you have high ratio, and you have the soft knee if you want smoother compression. Uh, you can put up some dry uh, sound here, so it's not like um, it's not like a dry and wet. It's like it's wet and how much dry you're putting in. Um, yeah, so it's a really nice plugin. This live thing here also. Let me explain that. Uh, if I go to my um, you see here, this is my mixer. <coughs> Sorry about that. This is all recorded live. So um, uh, in the mixer here, I can see two milliseconds here. This is a latency that this plugin is adding. If I put it in live mode, it's not adding any latency. So there's a bit of latency because it's um, doing a bit of a look ahead. And uh, it makes the attack uh, respond smoother uh, when you're when you're not in live. But it depends on what you're compressing. You might prefer to sound in live mode too. So just try it out. It's a pretty good plugin. Um, next up is the deesser. So I just typed in deesser. The deesser is pretty cool. It um, reacts to the uh, contrary to a fixed threshold. Um, Deesser, this one like has a dynamic threshold. So um and you just go to the reduction here. Sorry, we'll listen to the voice. Whoa. Hello, something. So right now you can't really hear let me record something with S's. Hello, something. Hello something. Hello something. Hello something. Hello something. Hello something. So just a reduction here. And um, that's... Uh, I usually don't touch the rest of the stuff except uh, these things here. They determine where the reduction will happen. So you have this graph here. Hello something. You see the S is right here between 5K and... 20 hello something and maybe between hello something hello some hello something so yeah this plugin is pretty cool i'll be honest i have third party deessers that i use more often but i've used the this deesser with no problem and you can get great sound with it next up is the envelope shaper um the envelope shaper is really cool for drums let me load up uh, groove agent Yeah, it would be fun if these open faster. I'm using a 16 core machine here. 3950X, and it's pretty slow. Okay, so I got drums. And if I insert the um, transient shaper, so it's going to be in dynamic envelope shaper. So this is really cool. Um, and you have a control on the attack. So let me show you how it sounds. So you see 20 dB on attack really makes it pop. 
And if I remove the attack, and um, the length here, it's for, um, so it's the length of the attack. Um, and the release, if you pump it up, it will kind of bring the ambience forward. And if you go to the left, it makes your sound kind of drier or shorter. I mean, this is pretty cool for only one knob. Uh, the release here. Um, it's pretty cool if you want to change the vibe of your drums. You can ride that like in your chorus and um yeah it's a really uh it's a really good envelope shaper love it um next one is going to be the gate so let's go here on the vocal track let's load the gate um a gate uh let me just show you how it works here we got the threshold so if the threshold is too high the sound's not coming through so we got to put it low enough. And when the state is red, that means that it's the signal is cut off completely. Um, usually I I just play with the release setting and the threshold. You can always find um you can always go through the other parameters. Um, and if you don't want to reduce 100%, we'll just use the range here. So now it's re reducing uh, infinity. If you only want to reduce, let's say you're on a snare mic that has high at bleed, then you just want to reduce like a 6 dB of high at bleed. Well, that's how you could do it. 6 dB range and then adjust so that the snare um, goes through. And then after, it's going to reduce uh, 6 dB to high at bleed. Makes it more natural. Um, yeah, so that's the gate. Now let's go to the uh, limiter. Um, it's in the dynamic. Uh, limiter. This one I've used before on my channel. Uh, set it to auto release and just pump the input. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is crazy. I'm doing stupid stuff. Sorry if it's loud, but uh, yeah, this limiter you can use it on your uh, master as a final limiter, it works. It's not the one I usually use. I have third party that I use, but it, this one works fine and will get your tracks ballpark in the um, commercial loudness. Uh, the maximizer is quite similar to the um, limiter. It doesn't have, um, has different controls. You go classic, modern, and uh, then you just optimize to make it loud. Uh, I won't play it, maybe. <laughs> Shows you the RMS. Um, yeah, so this one you can put on your output channel also. It's a bit um, less conventional, the name of the uh, controls, like Optimize. Uh, I find the other one uh, more simple. Um, but yeah, this one works great. Maximize if you want to make it loud. Uh, next one is going to be the um, multiband compressor. So it's under dynamics, multiband compressor. Um, this one has tons of settings too. Um, let's say, let's see if we have some stuff for acoustic guitar. We have picked acoustic guitar. Let's try that. Okay, maybe wouldn't use that, but um, yeah, basically it's a multiband compressor. It works great. It's included in Cubase, use it, EQ included here, split bands, it splits in four bands. Um, yeah, and it has sidechain uh, capabilities. Um, yeah, just use it. Um, next up is dynamic envelope, sh multi-envelope shaper. So this is like the envelope shaper I showed you before, but it's multi-band. So sometimes you want to add some punch to your kicks, but only like to the lows or to low mids, or you want to add some attack only to the top end. So this um, makes it easy. The multiband envelope shaper. Uh, next up, we're going to the EQs. 
and we're going through the studio EQ. So this one is basically the same as the one that's included into the channel setting panel. Just four bands, really simple. I often use this one too when I just need to gain something or I just need a volume knob. I know that um, when these are at zero, they're um, it's like if there's nothing, uh, so it's just a gain. And if you move these, well, you get your EQ, same uh, modifiers as uh, in the channel setting. So yeah, this one is a real nice EQ for only four band, simple stuff. Um, next up, we got frequency, which is the um, kind of the answer to uh, FabFilter Pro-Q. Um, so I'll be honest, I use another EQ usually instead of this one, but this one has uh, the ability to um, to go linear phase. You got dynamic EQ on uh, your bands, sidechain capabilities. Uh, you have MS, uh, MS uh, processing, so um, process mid, process side separately. Um, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's really nice that they've included this uh, for free in uh, Cubase. Next up is the uh, let's go Steinberg, and we're going into the modulation category. We'll go to the auto pan. So auto pan, it's pretty cool. Wouldn't use that on this acoustic guitar, but pads, synths, electric guitars. Uh, keyboards it just auto automatically pans um, your sound from left to right if you're a hundred percent it will go totally a hundred percent left to a hundred percent right um, yeah and you can decide of the you can sync it up with your BPM you can get those kind of Leslie type of sounds with that so yeah auto pan is pretty cool um, let me show you chopper here uh, I, at a certain point, I was using this, uh, so with this setting here, depth 100%, mono, and sp speed one quarter. So this does kind of like, um, if you're side chaining to a kick that's four and four. Remove it. Activate. makes your uh yeah music pump so if you don't want to set up a sidechain with a kick or you don't have any plugins that can do that um you can use chopper so if you have you're doing uh edm want to get that uh, those synths and bass pumping use this curve here and speed one quarter um put that 100% and this determines the amount of um, pumping you'll get. Keep it in mono, or else um, you'll get the left-right stuff going on. Just keep it in mono, and uh, yeah, chopper can work. Next one, modulation chorus. It's the regular chorus. I mean, I usually just open it up and use the default preset or just make it a bit wider and it's coarse, it works, it's clean, it doesn't have any special vintage flavor, it's just a basic chorus, works great. Next one is Cloner, I'll use it on the vocals here. Cloner is a simulator, uh, it simulates like... um vocal doubling so let's say four voices ooh, ooh, ooh. if i take it out ooh, ooh. it's pretty nice uh play with the presets um every voice can be detuned a bit and delayed um yeah it works great for uh pop vocals that you want to make uh, real thick next up is the flanger Type in flanger. Again, like the chorus, it's a clean flanger. And you don't need to gain stage it properly. It will always work and sound like a flanger. 
I usually use uh, start from the default and just go from there. Uh, next one, phaser, same thing as flanger. It's a regular phaser. Work from there, and it just, these just work. They're what's written on the bottle, you know. It's a phaser. It's a phaser. Rotatory is um, a Leslie simulator. Have different uh, settings you can use. It's really fun for doing lo-fi stuff or for uh, mangling sounds. Uh, next up, studio chorus. It's like the chorus, it just has two stages of chorus, so, so it's more intense. For lo-fi stuff, it can be pretty cool. Next up, tremolo. It's tremolo. Put spatial on zero if you don't want any left-right thingy going on. You can sync it to the uh, beat. So it's a tremolo, works great. And last one is vibrato. Vibrato is the one you want to use if you're doing some lo-fi stuff. So um, yeah, let's have a listen, just the default setting. You can hear a bit of like the pitch is moving a bit. So vibrato, tremolo that we've heard before is just like someone uh, playing with the volume knob on up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, a vibrato is like uh, s someone playing with the pitch. Pitch goes up, pitch goes down, pitch goes up, pitch goes down. So let's do no spatial um, and let's do uh, depth 100%. And I'll do it manual here. So you see, that's a lot. But if I just put a bit of that... can make sounds uh, sound more lo-fi using uh, vibrato. Combine this with the grungalizer, with a bit of tremolo maybe, and with some chorus, and with some rotatory, and you can get some crazy stuff and save your insert chains, and you can use them later. Cool. Um, so now let's go to the uh, Octaver. So I'll load up. It's the other plugin that's pretty cool. It's under uh, pitch, octaver. So this is the direct sound. Octave one is one octave down. Octave two is two octave down. So let me start by having these on zero percent. This is only direct sound. Ooh. With the octave down. Ooh. Ooh. It's really not tracking well. Ooh. Hello. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, I have a third party plugin that I usually use for my Octaver. Um, this one, I've used it before. I think it works better for uh, higher pitch vocals and vocals that are maybe um, vocalists that are better than me. But um, yeah, it's an Octaver. But yeah, it's not tracking correctly. Okay, I might take this one off the list. It's uh, yeah, it's not that good. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go with pitch correct. So pitch correct. This is a bit like um, auto tune. Um, it can work quite well. Uh, speed here is the speed of the correction. Uh, if you go at the max one hundred, it will correct your um singing uh, really fast uh, tolerance is um, if you put no tolerance it will uh, do more correction if you put more 100% uh, tolerance it will do less correction transpose well usually you don't want to transpose um, this is for the sh form and shift um, if you want to preserve the formance or not we'll give you a different sound preserving formance is much more natural um, optimized for male or female. This is male. Well, we'll do it. And um, scale source here is the important part here. So um, this is where you want to select uh, the scale 
of your song. So if you don't know, you can probably use chromatic. It's the 12 uh, semitones and it might work, might not. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I know that this song is in uh, G major. So um, I'll just go major and I'll go uh, G. So you see here that there's some notes that the notes that have their name on are the notes where uh, pitch correction is possible. The ones like C sharp doesn't have the little circle here or F doesn't have a circle means that the note cannot be corrected at that note. Um, let's have a listen. So I'm at speed 100, tolerance 0, so it should sound a bit like T-Pain. Yeah. If I put that lower, let's say I do speed uh, 29, tolerance uh, 60. Whoa. Whoa. Kind of better it's not perfect but a bit better um i'm going to show you a cool thing you can do also with this plugin here so load it up on your vocal track create a midi track click an empty space here and go uh add midi track and call it uh, uh pitch trig so the pitch trigger um now on that midi track the output of the MIDI track is going to go to um, pitch correct MIDI in. Vox is the name of my track. Insert to pitch correct MIDI in. Pitch correct is the name of the plugin. So, okay. And in the scale source of my pitch correct plugin, so this pitch correct plugin is on the vocal track. Okay. Um, I go here and I go external MIDI note. So now, if I play on my MIDI track, so I activate recording, I need the MIDI keyboard. So I can actually play, um, I can play the voice. Let me record something that's going to be, make it more obvious for you guys. Hey! Hey! And the speed, yeah, let's put the speed 100%, tolerance there. Hey. So you see, you can actually play the keyboard. Hey. And it's playing your uh, vocal. Hey. So yeah, useful for creating all kinds of crazy stuff. Go wild. Um, so that was pitch shift. Uh, pitch correct the plugin. Uh, let me show you now. Um, yeah, that was pitch correct. Let me show you now. Uh, revelation. Pretty cool. Uh, algorithmic reverb. Whoa. Whoa. Sounds good. Uh, you can use it on inserts or on sends. Um, I usually use my reverbs on send, so let's say I have this vocal here. I'll mute the acoustic guitar for now. Got the vocal, open up the uh, channel settings, right click on an empty slot here, go add effects channel to send one, select uh, revelation. Sorry, revelation. Uh, stereo, yes. Uh, okay. Oh. And now I have it on send. Oh. Whoa. Sorry about that. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I should just put a limiter on my stereo out for yeah for the next screencast. Sorry about that distortion there, guys. Um, yeah. So revelation. Next one I want to show you guys is a uh, reverence. So reverence is the uh, it's not a reverb uh, plugin, but it's the um, convolution reverb. And you can actually uh, 
So you have tons of uh, presets here, but you can also import your own uh, convolution uh, files, your impulse response. And uh, yeah, so you can actually use um, impulse response from acoustic spaces that you've been to or from um, stuff you've downloaded over the net. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Sounds great. Has tons of uh, preset, has also some uh, vintage stuff in here, um, some plates and some uh, spring reverbs. They've added a few uh, vintage stuff. Ooh. 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 And this one is in reverse. Uh, if you want to have it not in reverse, go down here. Ooh. 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 Sounds kind of cool. Um, you can lock the mix too also. If you're uh, browsing through presets and... You, um, you want it to be always 100% or not 100%, uh, you can lock it, and when you're changing presets, it will um, keep that value. And here, time scaling is just how long uh, you want it, 150% um, of the original uh, length of the captured impulse, or 100% is uh, what's been captured or shorter. Um, you can get also time domain spectrogram and information on, uh, yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. I like this plugin a lot and, um, it's a nice one to have. Um, next, the uh, reverb is going to be Roomworks. So right click, add FX, Roomworks. So Roomworks is just a basic also, um, algorithmic reverb. Ooh. Let's make it a bit longer. Ooh. Ooh. As your standard uh, reverb um, settings. Oh, let's do wet only here. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Basically, it's um, it's a reverb. Use it. It sounds good. You can automate it. Okay, so that's all for uh, reverbs for now. Um, next up, we're going to go into the, uh, we'll go to the imager. Uh, now I only have uh, mono files. Let me just create the, let me use reverence to, um... okay, now I have a stereo uh, acoustic. Um, let me show you the imager. So it's just called imager. And this is, um, they should have called it multiband imager. But um, this is a new one, too. And um, basically, the width knob boosts the side signal of your um, of your audio. So you need to start with a stereo signal, and then you can boost the width. I'll just put 100, 200% everywhere. And if I bypass... You can hear more clearly the reverb when it's working because it's boosting the sides and the sides are only reverb on this track here. So, um, yeah, and you can repan your signals and do crazy stuff. Uh, you have uh, the ability to use it also on just one band, but um, you can do multi-band too. And if you use this thing live here, uh, the plugin will have less uh, latency, will have no latency, no look ahead, and the phase uh, of the uh, the signal is being split into four, um, into four, uh, sorry about that, into four um, lows, mids, mids, highs, and highs. Um, the crossover um, is uh, will be better if you're not in live mode. That's what I want to say about the imager. Now let's go to the um, one. Also, one thing to note is that I'm working on mono material, mono source, but I'm working on the stereo track here. So that's always what I want to do in Cubase is use a stereo track, even if I'm working on mono recordings. Gives me the ability to put some stereo processing on the inserts. If I would be using a mono track the stereo processing on my inserts would get some to mono that's not what i want 
Um, now, Mono to Stereo is another cool plugin. This one, um, you can use it to, let's say I have this mono acoustic guitar. I pop this guy in, let me put it to 200%. And what's cool is that it's mono compatible. So now I've went, I've opened control room, I clicked on uh, some to mono here. So I'm listening to my down mix preset mono. It's summing the left and the right. And you see when I'm activating and deactivating the plugin, it's not affecting the sound, which means that um, this plugin doesn't cause any phase issues. Um, maybe if you go super low on the. So you see the plugin doesn't cause any phase issue when you down next to mono. Basically what this plugin is doing, uh, I could show you, is um, it's uh, to manually recreate it. Uh, you just duplicate two tracks uh, and then you delay both of these tracks, let's say five, milli five milliseconds pan to the left, pan to the right, and flip the phase of one of the two tracks. So this is what the plugin is doing. That's why it's mono compatible, because these um, the signal that's um, widening the mono track is getting canceled when it's summed to mono, a bit like MS recording. So that's mono to stereo, and last one, well, it's the uh, it's the tuner, guys. It works quite well. Let me put on my voice here. Yeah, I can't sing. Sorry about that. Um, so that's uh, the tuner. Uh, it works good for bass guitar. Um, it's not actually the one I usually uh, use, but uh, it works great, and it's free, included with uh, Cubase. So go on, play with the um, the plugins. Like before buying tons of plugins, I would go and start using these, and once you know how these work you'll probably have an idea of what's missing in your plugin arsenal, but um, plugins are usually a pretty bad investment. You want to invest more like in learning new stuff or in actual physical instruments or um, plugins will be gone in a few years and they're not the best investment. But uh, yeah, Cubase comes with tons of good stuff. So that was it for part three of this series, uh, Cubase Crash Course. Thanks.